What's going on guys, it's your boy Mr. Woz and in today's video I'll be showing you how to kill fire giants in three popular locations in RuneScape and I will show you some safe spots using range and magic as well as using melee. I will also help you out regarding recommended requirements, how to get to these locations, the gear setup etc and also some general information on the monster itself just to give you a bit of insight on when this monster was released etc. I have also left some timestamps for you so you can skip to a certain point in this video. Timestamps are also in the description below so it will save you guys some time. So these fire giants was released on the 10th of May 2002 and 19 years on these fire giants are still very very popular when it comes to training as they provide some decent XP and GP rates per hour. There is three levels for the fire giants. We have the level 86 fire giant which will grant you 111 slayer XP per kill. Level 104 fire giant which will grant you 133 slayer XP per kill. And a level 109 fire giant which will grant you 153 slayer XP per kill. And with the right gear and stats you will be able to kill these very very easily. Now these fire giants are very popular when it comes to slayer as you can get them assigned by 6 slayer masters. So starting off we have Crystalia, I think I've said that right, which is a Wilderness Slayer Master as you can get between 100 and 150 Fire Giants per task. Next we have Vanica and you can get between 60 and 120 Fire Giants per task. Next we have Cheldar, I don't know if I've said that right but never mind, and you can get between 110 and 170 Fire Giants per task. Next is Konar and you can get between 120 to 170 Fire Giants per task. Next will be Neve or Steve during the Monkey Man is 2 quest and you can get between 120 and 185 fire giants per task. And lastly we have Duradel and you can get between 130 and 200 fire giants per task. And as these are safe spottable in multiple areas in RuneScape I will take this task all day long. Now before I go into the requirements the three locations I will be killing these fire giants is at Brimhaven, Catacombs of Corinne and waterfall dungeon so for the skill requirements i would recommend having at least 50 range so you can use the magic short bow if you want to use magic then i would recommend having a minimum of 13 magic so you can use fire strike which is very effective as they are weak to magic if you've got 55 magic then that's great as you can out some of the items from the fire giants especially the rune scimitar as you can make some nice gp there and if you want to use melee then I would recommend having at least 60 plus in your combat stats so you can use a dragon scimitar or an abyssal whip at 70 attack. Now before I jump into the gear setups you really need to wear a slayer helm which requires 400 slayer points. If you don't have that then at least buy the black mask in a grand exchange. I think it's around 7 to 800k at the moment but this will give you a 16% boost in attack and strength and if you have the imbued slayer helm which is highly recommended this will give you an additional 15% boost to range accuracy damage along with 15% boost to your mage accuracy and damage but of course if you don't have the funds for a black mask or enough points for a slayer helm then it's okay for the time being so for the gear setup you don't have to wear anything special as they are very easy to kill even for a low level player but i will go through a low and medium gear setup so let's start off with the mage method as that is the fire giant's weakness. So for a low level setup if you are 20 plus magic for example I would be wearing the Xerican robes which requires 10 defense to wear and this set gives you a plus 23 magic attack bonus. A great all round staff would be a standard staff of air, staff of fire, water or earth staff depending on what spell you want to use as this gives a plus 10 magic attack bonus and also they are very cheap to buy and just a great all round low level staff and there's no magic requirement to wield them as well. For the shield slot you want to be using the book of darkness which is a free book after completing the quest horror from the deep and this book gives you a plus 10 magic attack bonus. For the necklace slot you want to be using an amulet of magic and that gives you a plus 10 magic attack bonus. For the cape slot I would definitely recommend getting a god cape from completing Mage Arena 1 as this gives you a plus 10 magic attack bonus. Now for the medium level setup if you're between levels 20 and 50 it would be to upgrade your Xerican robes to full mystic which requires 40 magic and 20 defense as this gives a plus 45 magic attack bonus which is really really nice. A great all round staff would be a slayer staff which requires 50 magic and 55 slayer to wield and can be obtained from any slayer master for 21k. This staff gives a plus 12 magic attack bonus and it's great as it can auto cast spells such as crumble undead 
magic dart, wave and surge spells. This is also great for Barrows and Dagonoff Kings as well. Next would be to upgrade the Book of Darkness to the Tome of Fire, which requires level 50 magic to wield, and this costs 800k in the Grand Exchange, and what's great about this is the Tome of Fire gives unlimited uh, fire runes if you put some burnt pages inside, and you can get this as a drop from Winter Todd if you don't want to pay the 800k, but this gives a plus 8 magic attack bonus. Next would be to upgrade the Amulet of Magic to the Occult Necklace which is around 260k at the moment and this gives a plus 12 magic attack bonus. Next would be to upgrade the God Cape to the Imbued version from completing Mage Arena 2 and this gives a plus 15 magic attack bonus. For the ring slot I would suggest to get a Seer's Ring which costs over 200k and this will give you a plus 6 magic attack bonus or plus 12 magic attack bonus if the ring is imbued. Also, if you could upgrade to the Trident of the Swamp, it will stack with the Occult Necklace, God Capes, Tormented Bracelet and Ancestral, so you can potentially do some serious damage on any monster. Okay, so that's the magic setup out the way, so now I'm going to move on to the range method. So, for a low level setup, if you are 30 plus range for example, I would suggest wearing full snakeskin armor with 30 defense, and this will give you a plus 31 range attack bonus. Now for a great all round weapon it would be the magic shortbow as this requires 50 range and this will give you a plus 69 range attack bonus which is really really nice. For the ammo slot I would be using steel arrows or higher, at the moment it doesn't matter too much at lower levels but as your range level gets a little bit higher then you can be a bit more precise on what arrows or bolts to use. For the necklace slot you want to be wearing the amulet of glory which is a good starting amulet which gives a plus 10 range attack bonus. For the cape slot I would highly recommend getting the Avatar Tractor which only requires level 30 range and this is a reward from completing the quest Animal Magnetism and this only gives a plus 2 range attack bonus but you can upgrade when you are a higher level. Now for the medium level setup if you're between levels 30 and 70 range it would be to upgrade the Snakeskin Armor to Blessed Dragonhide as this gives a plus 79 range attack bonus which is really really nice. Also the blessed version gives a plus 6 prayer bonus which is nice. It can be a little bit pricey costing anywhere between 1.3 and 2.9 mil. If you can't afford this just yet then wear black dragon hide armor but it won't be as good as blessed D hide as you're getting a plus 21 range attack bonus. Next will be to upgrade the magic short bow to a rune crossbow. This gives a plus 90 range attack bonus. Next will be to upgrade your ammo from arrows to broad bolts. You will need 55 slayer to use them but they are very very cheap and also very very strong. Next will be to upgrade your amulet of glory to an amulet of fury. This does cost 1.4 mil but you do get a plus 12 extra defensive bonuses compared to the glory but the attack bonuses are the same. Next will be to upgrade the Avas Attractor to the Avas Accumulator. This gives a plus 4 range attack bonus and this is a reward from completing the quest Animal Magnetism as I mentioned before. Now for the glove slot I would highly recommend getting Barrow's gloves as these are the best in slot gloves for range and you get this as a reward from completing the quest Recipe for Disaster and the gloves give a plus 12 range attack bonus. Okay, so that is the range gear setup out of the way, and we've got one more setup to go through before I show you how to kill these fire giants, save spotting, etc. And that is the low level melee gear setup. So, if you are plus 30 in your combat stats, I would be wearing full adamant with the kite shield, and this will give you some nice defensive stats. A good all round weapon would be the adamant scimitar, which gives you a plus 6 stab bonus plus 29 slash bonus and plus 28 strength bonus which is great against most monsters. For the necklace slot I would be wearing the amulet of strength which is a great starting amulet as it gives a plus 10 strength bonus. For the boot slot you want to be wearing the adamant boots which gives a plus 1 strength bonus as well as some defensive bonuses as well. Now for the medium level setup, if you're between levels 30 and 60 in your combat stats, I would upgrade the adamant armor to a fighter torso, which is an item you get from Barbarian Assault, and this is a fantastic chest piece as this gives a plus 4 strength bonus along with some very nice defensive stats. The torso has the same strength bonus as the Banos chest plate, but has less defensive stats than the Banos chest plate, but also the Banos chest plate costs around 14 to 15 mil, so you can rather buy that or you can get the free fighter torso which will take you around two to three hours with a good team. If you don't have time to grind for a fighter torso then not to worry you can use the rune plate body but this doesn't give any strength or attack bonuses it just gives defensive stats. 
For a great all round weapon would be the Dragon Scimitar which requires 60 attack and completing the quest Monkey Man is 1 which is a really fun quest and this gives a plus 66 strength bonus along with plus 67 slash bonus and this is a fantastic weapon as I used to use this to get my 99 strength. Next would be to upgrade your Adamant Full Helm to a Berserker Helm which requires 45 defense and completion of the quest Fremenic Trials and this gives you a plus 3 strength bonus as well as some defensive stats as well. Next would be to upgrade your adamant plate legs to the rune plate legs which gives a lot better defensive stats. Next would be to upgrade your amulet of strength to an amulet of fury. This does cost 1.4 mil but you do get a plus 8 strength bonus along with plus 10 attack bonuses, plus 15 defensive bonuses and plus 5 prayer bonus. Next would be to upgrade your adamant boots to dragon boots as these give a plus 4 strength bonus as well as some nice defensive stats. For the cape slot I would 100% grind for a fire cape which is a reward from completing the fight caves and killing Jad and this will be your best in slot melee cape apart from the inferno cape. The fire cape gives a plus 4 strength bonus along with plus 2 prayer bonus and a small amount of attack and defensive bonuses. Next would be to upgrade your adamant kite shield to a dragon defender. You can get this by killing the cyclops in the warriors guild and this will give you a plus 6 strength bonus along with plus 24 in attack and defensive bonuses and this will be your second best melee shield to wear apart from the vernic defender which is number 1. And for the glove slot you want to be wearing barrow's gloves as this gives you a plus 12 strength bonus which is really really nice along with plus 12 attack and defensive bonuses. So that is the requirements and the gear setups out the way. I do apologise it took a little bit longer than I wanted but I just wanted to be precise and I wanted to show you exactly what to wear and what requirements you need to kill these fire giants. So let's start off with the first location which is Brimhaven Dungeon. This is a very popular area and this dungeon has two areas of fire giants and one item you do need to take with you before you enter is an axe to chop down the vines once you are inside. To get to this dungeon I would set your POH to Brimhaven so it would be super fast to get to this dungeon as this is what I used to do when I was training Slayer. So all you got to do is run south for a few seconds and you'll come across an NPC called Senibok, I think I've said that right, and you have to pay 875 GP to enter or one off fee of 1 mil. And once you're inside, follow this path round past the moss giants, they may be aggressive if you are a low level. You can rather continue south to the level 86 fire giants on the ground floor or you can go up them set of stairs and run north past the greater demons and you will see more fire giants. So once you are at any of these areas, if you're using melee, there's no right or wrong place to stand to kill them, just use your best melee gear you can and start killing them. But if you are using magic or ranged, I will show you a couple of good safe spots. So the first safe spot will be upstairs and you want to be where I am as you can see on the minimap. I've also marked a tile to show the exact area I'm safe spotting these fire giants. And to show that this safe spot works, I'm going to start attacking a couple. And as you can see, these fire giants do get stuck. Sometimes they run back, which I find quite weird, but normally they get stuck next to the tile I have marked, and you'll be perfectly safe. The other safe spot will be downstairs, and as you can see on the minimap, I'm next to a vine, and I think that's blood on the floor as well, I'm not too sure. But you will have two fire giants to choose from, and you won't get attacked as they get stuck. I have also marked two tiles which is the closest you can go without being attacked. Okay so the next location will be at the Catacombs of Karend which is another popular area and it is multi-combat when killing any of these monsters in this dungeon. The fastest way to get to this dungeon is by using the Karend teleport spell which requires 69 magic but you will need to find a book of transportation incantations, I think I've said that right, in the Arceus library to unlock this teleport. There should be a rune light plugin to help you find this book fast and this will teleport you straight outside the dungeon. So once you're inside you want to run south till you see the ghosts and then run past the hill giants then moss giants. Follow the path north till you get to the blood fields and then eventually you will see the level 104 and 109 fire giants. This is a great place for afk melee training as you can group them up and protect from melee. Over time they will stop being aggressive but all you have to do is run away from that area for around 30 seconds or so. When you go back they should be aggressive again. Now for the magic and ranged method there is one great safe spot as you can see I have marked a tile to show you where you can stand. Sometimes the fire giants run away like the other safe spot but most of the time they will get stuck near you and you can freely attack the fire giants without getting attacked. And for the last location it will be the waterfall dungeon. This is a nice location to safe spot fire giants as well as using melee. 
Now, if you have not completed the waterfall quest, you will have to use the Glarial's amulet in your inventory to gain access to the dungeon. After completing the quest, you won't need the necklace. The only other item you will need to get here is a rope, and I'll explain why in a minute. So the best way to get here is by using your game's necklace to the barbarian outpost and run south towards a small house. Then go through the house and behind the gate there is a raft. Click the raft to ride it and you will crash onto a small island. This is where your rope will come into play. So you want to use the rope on the rock and you will do a small animation to the next island and then you want to use the rope again on a dead tree to be on a small ledge on top of the backstory and falls then you can enter the dungeon safely. Okay, so once you're inside, you just want to run north and you will come across seven fire giants level 86. So same again when using melee, you can stand in any part of this area and you'll be fine. But if you are using magic or range, then you want to stand in the most northern part of this area next to a door. And I have marked a tile just to show you where to exactly stand. And you can simply start attacking the fire giants without taking any damage. So in summary, what I like about these fire giants is that they give some decent slayer XP as well as combat and ranged and magic XP. And you can also make a small amount of GP per hour, around 20k GP according to the OSRS wiki. Another reason why I like the fire giants is that there is quite a few locations to kill them as well as safe spots in every location. One other reason why I like this method is that you don't need to wear high end gear to kill these, hence why I only mentioned the low and medium tiered setups and requirements. So that is the end of the video guys, I really hope you enjoyed this one, if you did smash that like button, comment below and let me know what you think about this slayer guide with safe spots and of course subscribe to the channel for more old school runescape videos. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video.